Godzilla! Yes. Zilla bitch. Godzilla! No, that's my thing. $14 million is on John Wick's head. Yeah, that's, that's, that's where lot. it starts. Yeah, it's a lot of money. And I, and I, I started to think, would I risk my life for 14 million? Because this is John Wick we're talking about, the baddest guy in the universe. And I said, no. Started to think about how money, more money equals more problems. Mm. And, and, and I know uh, money definitely helps out, but in what ways do you think money can negatively impact a person's life? Well, given that I can pay my mortgage and my kids going to school, I can't say having money has really been that bad. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I mean, it's kind of like, <laughs> I remember um, um, Seinfeld once uh, was, I remember he was talking to Obama and he said something about being famous and he goes, no, because I distinctly remember not being famous. And being famous, way better. Way I better. distinctly remember not having money, having money, way better. I mean, I think that there's, there's, there's lessons with money. And I think, uh, you know, you can spend it wisely or not, or um, it can get you into trouble. <laughs> yeah. But uh, um, I think it's definitely something you have to think about. Definitely. See that? I'd like that. Will you accept these five bits of paper for it? And people do. It still amazes me, you know, it's, it's considered. I mean, it's like in a, a way of moving. I mean, the way you're paid, whatever. Yeah, well, the yeah. pay's better on episode three, too, isn't it? Oh, uh, yeah, that's yeah, what's up. Bit that's Talking what's about up. movies. But, you know, this goes back to what you said about the bounty. That's go back to old Hollywood movies. It's like, you know, wanted, dead or alive. Fifty, you know, thousand bucks, dead or alive. This pays respect to old classic movies. John Wick does. Going out with the bounty, everybody goes... Oh, yeah, I'll have a bit of that. Mm. So they come from all over the world. I'll have some of that. Yeah. I'll have some of that. And that's the, the great thing about what Chad ups the stakes on each, on each episode, I think. You know, that he makes it a little bigger, broader. And Keanu, or I should say John Wick, because they're indistinguishable in many ways. I mean, he's so... Well, because he brings enormous sympathy to the part. Yeah. And also vulnerability and also indomitability. Because yeah. you no know, doubt... You ain't gonna fuck with John Wick. Oh, yeah. You get a lot of money, you think you're slightly above above the rules. And in the movie, no one's above the rules. The fighting style in this movie is a little bit different from the first two. I really enjoyed it. I think there's a lot more knife work. How hard did you guys have to work crafting these these fight scenes? Yeah, it's what's really fun about John Wick is to to train for them. Um, and so there was a little bit more knife fighting and uh, a little sword. Uh, you know, it's fun just to, it, there's a little more complexity in these films because in the sense of, in John Wick previously, it's a lot of one-on-one, -on -one, even though it's a lot of people. This is like two people at the same time, three people at the same time. Um, so it's really fun to kind of do that dance and get the cooperation and collaboration with everybody. Um, that's a, a great pleasure of it. I can imagine. It's like uh, playing on a team or something. You know, you yeah. have this team and you get to execute, it's fun. The fight scene with the dogs, oh my gosh, that was so great. How hard did you guys have to work to pull that scene off? Hard. <laughs> Very hard. <laughs> Hallie went through firearms training, tactical weapons training, martial arts, Aikido, Aikijitsu, Sambo, Judo, dog training, choreography training with the stunt team for five months. Mm. Plus, I got to hang out with the dogs. Yeah, plus a you lot. to hang with dogs That's what I've become like a pseudo trainer with them so they would know me and listen to me. So when we got on the set full of stuntmen and people in the town and cameras and noise and smoke and bangs, that I could actually, you know, command them and control them a little bit until the cats started walking through our Had set. Had a lot of cat problems. Wow. Then we had problems. Dogs don't like that, I assume. Dogs love cats. Okay. <laughs> but they want to go get them. Yeah, they want to get them. They don't want to attack stuntmen when there's cats around. You're, you're a people person. I, I read all of these stories about Keanu Reeves how he goes above and beyond to help. I saw something about a plane breaking down, and, and, and you just going above and beyond to be such a... Don't awesome believe person. everything you read. So. I don't necessarily do that, but I do know that in my three interactions with you, you are an extremely nice guy. What fuels you to sort of go above and beyond to sort of just have this, be, have this be, a, be a nice person when the world we want to divide? And... No, does it? Not all the time. People, <laughs> come on, you don't. I mean, no. everybody. I mean, I think life is so precious, and it's such a gift, and I think you just have to stay connected to that and respect other people. Yeah. I mean, I think you just have to do that and then, and then take it from there. Speaking and let them show you what's going, you know? Yeah. Don't judge, don't, you know, try to be in the moment, you know? Yeah. Speaking of respect, 
I know trust is a very, very, very big thing in this film. Uh, can you talk about a time you were betrayed? Because me, I, I have a difficult time trusting people because they betrayed me. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go John Wick myself. Can you talk about being betrayed? I have, but I who I don't want to sh no no because it's I don't. I mean I I learned from it and you know I'll, in order to feel betrayed you had to have loved someone first. Otherwise you don't use the word betrayed, and so that's what makes it really painful. And I don't want to go there. Not on John. Because you know I've been betrayed. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, see? But you already know that story, so let's hear yours. People can't cope with personal stuff sometimes. Yeah. Everybody can't expect, you know, you can't expect somebody to say, oh, I expected him. Like, That's a terrible word to begin with. You expect? No, yeah. don't never expect. Lower your expectations. Well, if you can't talk about this, can you talk about how do you bounce back from that betrayal? Like, like just like being, just because that hurts. Like Keanu was talking about could you love someone, it hurts. Can you, can you talk about that at all? I think the way you bounce back is just living your best life and being happy. Yeah. That's how I've always bounced back from mm -hmm. those kinds of experiences in my life. Believe in yourself and hope for the best. Absolutely. And don't ever quit. I was on your Twitter and I saw you retweeted a photo of uh, Drake wearing your <laughs> photograph on the back of his jacket. When you see old pictures like that and people pro bringing it up and wearing it as fashion, how does that make you feel? I'm always flattered, especially to see Drake do it. Yeah. <laughs> really flattered. Yeah. You and Beyonce have been like the key of beauty. Who are some people that you find beautiful? Oh, today I find people beautiful that dare to be authentically who they really are. I'm so opposed to everyone changing their faces and searching for this image of beauty that isn't really real and doesn't exist. So I find people beautiful who are authentic, who have the real faces who are really authentic. Yeah, awesome. That's beautiful. That's true. It's God creation and you lift it's that beautiful. up. It's beautiful, yeah.